Hey everyone, um, we're going to be talking about uh, scales today. I've promised my worship team that I would start uh, working on some music theory with them uh, in our rehearsals, and I've uh, not done a very good job of getting it in just because of how busy we've been. So what I thought would be a good idea was to do some videos where they could reference it anytime they want it. Um, if anytime they need to go back and refresh, it would be there for them, and they could do it you know, in their own time. Uh, you know, whenever they need to. So um, I just uh, want to lay down some basic uh, foundations for, for how scales work, how we build them, how we find them, and then we will uh, go into some more de in-depth stuff like chord theory, circle of fifths, modes, um, uh, different variations of scales, that kind of thing. But all of Western music is based on the major scale. Every key that exists is based on a major scale. And all that means is uh, that key signature has um, what's called a, uh, a number of either flat or sharp notes within that key. Um, and it's pretty easy to, to, to build these scales if you just know a certain pattern. And that pattern um, is basically you start with a root note and then you go up two whole steps and then a half step. And then you go up three more whole steps and one more half step and basically end on that same note an octave higher. So an example of that would be, uh, let's just take the C scale, it's the easiest one. You would start on a C, you would go up a whole step to D, another whole step to E, and then a half step to F. Then you would go up another whole step to G, another whole step to A, another whole step to B, and then end with one half step to C. Now notice after G, I did not go to H or I or J or K. In music, it just goes from A to G, and then starts over again. So A, B, C, D, F, G, and then right after that is A, B, C, D, F, G, and it just keeps repeating over and over and over again. Um, but one of the rules in music theory is that each note is the next, you have to call it the next consecutive uh, letter in the alphabet from A to G. Um, so if we were to take, let's say, another starting note, let's say the key of G. Um, so G would be now our root note. We would go a whole step up to A, another whole step up to B, and then a half step to C. And then we have three more whole steps. So the first one would take us to D, the next whole step would take us to E, the next whole step would take us to F sharp, and then we would end with a half step on a G. So notice by following that pattern, it forced us to make the F sharp. Let's do one more. Let's do the key of A. I'm just randomly picking one. Um, we, we, let's start with the root note at A. Um, we're gonna take Two whole steps. So the first whole step will take us to B. The next whole step will take us to C sharp. Um, the reason why it doesn't just take us to C is because from B to C is a half step. So you have to go to C sharp to make it a whole step. All right, so we started on A, two whole steps took us from B to C sharp, and then we have a half step to D. Then we have three more whole steps. So the first one takes us to E. The second one takes us to F sharp. The next one takes us to G sharp, and then we end with our half step at A. So notice, again, that pattern forced three sharps. So the key of A has three sharps. It's C sharp, F sharp, and G sharp. Um, let's do a flat key now. Let's do the key of F. Um, F is our root note. Remember the pattern is root, um, two whole half, three whole half. So uh, F is our root note, two whole steps. So then the first whole step takes us to G, the next one takes us to A, and now we have a half step. We have to go to B flat. Now, the reason why I did not call that A sharp was because it has to go to the next consecutive letter in the alphabet. So what, after A, whatever we're going to, whether it's a whole step or half step, it has to be a B something because that's the next letter in the alphabet. So remember, we started at F. The first whole step is G. The second whole step is A. We go a half step to B flat, and then we do a whole step to C, whole step to D, whole step to E, and then we end with our half step to F. So um, basically, if you use that pattern, a root, two whole steps and a half, three whole steps and a half, or for short, root two whole half, three whole half, you can figure out any major scale that exists in music. So um, what I would encourage you to do now is just take this information and start working your way through um, the keys of the songs you already play in. Um, it's important not just, especially this is important for guitar players, don't just learn patterns where you just know where your fingers go. Learn the names of the notes in each step. So that way you learn your fretboard. It's a little easier on the, on the keys because it's just a grid that repeats itself. Not as uh, obvious on a guitar fretboard. So make sure you take the time and actually learn what these notes are, not just the patterns. All right, 
Um, see you next time.